Welcome to a quick start for Give It a Shot. This game here is a virus versus vaccine game. And more importantly, it's a science-based simulation. We'll get into more about that in a moment. Now, if you're getting started, please read the introduction. It's worth your time. For today, we're going to skip it and we're going to jump into the science because I want to point out a few things. So we're dealing with pathogens, right? These are the tiny microbes that make us get sick. So we know about COVID. We know about flu or influenza. We know about measles and polio. If you haven't seen the news lately, has been popping up a little bit. So it's not gone. We're also able to dive into things like natural herd immunity. And what I want to point out here is there are mathematical equations and parameters that are used when we're doing this game and simulation. Nothing's made up. It's all based in science. So let's jump in to the flu, for example, or H1N1. This is the seasonal one. If I zoom in, you're going to see that there is a rather complex mathematical model here. Now, for the math nerds, they're going to love it. For the rest of us, it could seem just a little bit daunting, but more importantly for us, what we want to know is that we're doing real science to build this model. So when you're playing your game, it's based on real science. All right, so let's go back to give it a shot. Now, how to play, I'm popping this up because there are actually two games in here. One is Design a City, and Design a City... We're not going to cover that today because we actually have a companion or a subset of this, which is called COVID Sim, that we developed over a year ago so people could explore and experiment with safety precautions and vaccinations for COVID. And this works just the same for Give It a Shot. So Design a City, we'll put the link in this video so that you can go to the COVID Sim Quick Start to learn how to do design a city. The other one, the other game, is Select a City. Now, Select a City, or World Cities, you'll see, is a place where we actually collected information and data on cities around the world, and that's what you get to work with. And from there, you get to experiment with adding different precautions and seeing what happens with the vaccines. Okay, so let's go back and play the game. All right. Design a city. Remember, we're going to pop over to the quick start on COVID sim. So you can learn about that one if you want to. So let's go into world cities. Now, here we get to see a collection of cities around the world. And I'll just click on a few of them here so you can see the different countries that we're doing in different cities. But for the purposes today, I'm going to stay close to home. I'm going to stay in New York. And if I scroll down, I can see the population at the time that we were building the game was a little over 8 million. And it shows the different vaccination rates for the different kinds of pathogens. So we have measles, flu, and polio. All right. So if we go in here and we can select a pathogen. Remember, we have COVID but you won't be able to play that because we don't have enough data on that to do in the uh, world cities. Flu, yes. Pandemic flu, good ones to compare and contrast. Measles, we have that. And as we mentioned, polio is popping up lately, so it's still something worth experimenting with. For today, we're going to do the seasonal flu. Now, if you click on the population impact, the number of people an infected person is likely to infect is listed out here, and that's called the R0. You'll see an R0, and a, the zero is not, is the way it's pronounced. And you'll see it's at 2.45. The important thing to remember about R0 is anything above one means it's going to keep spreading. So that virus, that bacteria, whatever the pathogen is, it's going to be spreading. Anything under one and it will slowly diminish on its own. And of course, closer to zero, the better. The daily death rate, 0%. It 
keep in mind, we had to round here. So instead of putting a whole lot of dot zero 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 zeros, a lot of times you'll see zero percent. But I think you're going to see that some people will die with some of these pathogens. The daily recovery rate, that's pretty self-explanatory. And if we look at the vaccine statistics, it shows you, again, the r naught value for people if they are actually vaccinated, and it goes down, which is good. We'd expect that. The daily vaccination rate, how many people we can get vaccinated per day. Vaccine waning rate, and that's something we can go into at another time. But for right now, it's 0% on this one. The effectiveness. Now, this is one to keep in mind. The flu vaccine, the annual flu vaccine, this can vary from year to year. And vaccine safety. So we'll go on now. If you go into the safety mode, uh, this is something that we're not going to add anything right now because prior to COVID, no one really did anything when we had the seasonal flu. So no masks, no distancing. Here is New York, a nice watercolor version of the city, aerial version in New York. Now, you're allowed to put in 10 people. If you try to put more than 10, it'll just let you know. So we're going to go to next, and it's going to load the simulation. And ah, as you expect, there's that r naught of 1.38. That means it's going to do some spreading. Uh, we we'll also see that their vaccines are active, and they're active at what we know People got vaccinated in New York at the time we were doing this simulation and developing the game. So I'm going to play the simulation. And as it's playing, I'm going to actually scroll down. And you can see the numbers updating of the number of vaccinated, infected, recovered, dead, and uninfected. Now, once it's run 365 days, remember we start on day zero, so there are actually 365, we end up with 13 people that have died. Now, it says 0%. Remember, this is a rounding issue. The other thing to point out is we have over 6 million people that recovered. That means at least 6 million people got the flu. That's a lot. So that's a high rate, right? 80%. Now, before I get into a whole lot more details, I'm just going to save this one. And I'm going to change the safety measures. I'm going to go back to the screen where we had the masks and the distancing. And I'm going to do this because... In this case, I'm actually going to activate some masks. And since a lot of people have gotten N95 masks, that's what I'm going to activate. And I'm going to think that we have a population that really would like to avoid the flu because no one wants to get sick, right? But not everybody. So I'm going to make it a 50-50. Half the people are going to go ahead in New York and wear masks, and the other half are not. Now, the ones that are wearing masks aren't going to do any social distancing. They're still going to go out shopping. They're still going to go to school. They're still going to do the usual things. They're just going to use masks when they're around with people. All right, so now we go down here again. No distancing. We go next. Same people that infected New York. And we go in here. Ah, the r naught value has dropped. This is really good. This is a good sign already. So let's play this simulation. And I'll scroll down again. And you see, as it goes across, the numbers keep updating. The first thing to point out is no one died. This is good. We only have 2,295 people who recovered. Well, that means not very many people actually got infected. That's amazing. So by simply adding N95 masks and for 50% of the population, we had a huge change in the results. The other thing to point out here it might be a little confusing, and let's, let's just save this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to save this simulation, and I'm going to go down to an area where I can compare the outbreaks. And this is nice because you have the numbers very easy to compare. So 13 here, zero. Great. Over 6 million, only 2,000. Wow. We did have the masks going. So the vaccination rate, in the first round was at a little under 30%. And that's because once someone gets the flu, we don't vaccinate them. In the last summary of this, or the last series that we ran, what we ended up doing is we could actually vaccinate more people because less people were getting sick from the flu. So the vaccination rate went up. 
So that helped also reduce the number of infections that we were seeing. Now, you can go in and graph these. I'm just going to pop one open just so you can see that you can graph and see what's going on with the different ones. You can go look at the different statistics. This is great. There are the summaries. All of these things are available. You can even get it in the table data by the different days of the year, which is a really great way to compare things. Now, with all that information, how do you collect it? Good question. So let's go back to the play menu and go to experiments. Now experiments gives you an idea, you know, how to get started, maybe some suggestions on some experiments, but you're probably very creative and you'll want to do your own. But this is to get you started. And to collect all that information, we created a data sheet. You can get it in a PDF, Excel. I'm going to open up the Google Sheet version. And the Google Sheets, you can, the very first thing you want to do is actually make a copy. And then once you make a copy, now you have all these cells. You can put in your different treatments, list the cities, uh, the different kinds of things you're having the people do or not do, and then writing down the results of what you get. And that allows you to collect an awful lot of information. And then you can compare it and even print out some graph paper that you can use to graph your results. So, Give It a Shot is an extensive game and simulation that allows you to experiment safely to figure out what measures you can use to reduce the spread of different pathogens. We hope you have fun with it. And if you like that one, you might even want to pop over to our games and simulations because we have lots of other ones, including COVID Sim that I mentioned before. So again, Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy playing the game.